So any, any and all essays coming from the high school will need to come eventually to you. We'll, uh... Good afternoon, everybody. Sorry to interrupt, John. Everybody's out for leaving. <laughs> Welcome to Jones Bar Rotary. Our president is off and about today. He's not playing golf. He has to go to Louisville for a funeral. He didn't miss a beat. So he asked me if I would fill in, and I said, of course. Terry has got us a uh, video to show us. So we'll go ahead and get that started. Number 17, take six. Good morning. We're here at the Dennis A. Wicker Civic Center and Conference Center where we are involved in the annual career fair. And boy, it's a beehive of activity. And I look forward to talking to my president of the college, Dr. Bud Martian. And he's been back there actually making faces at us, but we saw him. <laughs> we saw him. So good morning and welcome, Dr. Martian. Hello, I'm Elaine Marshall, Secretary of State. And let me say that I have been a community college teacher. And I understand the value of the community college system. I cannot imagine a better leader for Central Carolina Community College. The proof is in the pudding. The community college mission of serving families in the area has been met and exceeded at Central Carolina. President Bud, you richly deserve a good, wonderful retirement, knowing what value you've added to the families of this area, how you've provided individuals better education, economic opportunity, a chance for upward mobility. And the whole community has benefited because when people have jobs and the dignity of work that comes with that, communities and families thrive. Thank you for that. You have been someone who has listened, you've looked about, you have had a vision, you've had people to join in and buy into that vision to move Central Carolina Community College forward. Thank you. The three counties are very, very grateful. And the uh, other areas that students have come from, uh, whether it's healthcare campuses in Chatham and Harnett County, whether it's veterinary sciences, all the innovative work that has been done uh, for, the, for the people. I do a lot of economic recruitment. And when we talk about the community college system to international or even national companies, they don't quite grasp uh, how valuable the community colleges are uh, at the first glance. But what you've done with Caterpillar and the Apprentice Program is a shining example of how education and industry can work together to meet the needs of the citizens as well as the, the corporations among us. So thank you for providing this good example that I can share with others about how community colleges and industry work together. I hope you have, sincerely hope you have, a rich and rewarding retirement. I think you're the 5C guy. You're now the Central Carolina Community College Cougar forever and for life. Congratulations. But I just want to take this opportunity to uh, thank you for a great partnership between Lee County Schools and Central Carolina Community College over the years during your tenure. You've done a great job as president of Central Carolina Community College our partnerships with Lee Early College and Central Carolina Works and the Caterpillar Apprenticeship Program, along with our College Promise Program and all the other host of things that we work together on. I just want to thank you and wish you the very best in retirement and uh, know you will, you will enjoy it and uh, we wish you the very best. Hi, I'm Josh Stein, North Carolina's Attorney General. Dr. Marchant, thank you and congratulations on your retirement. You have left a wonderful legacy at Central Carolina Community College with your service this past decade. Thank you and enjoy your retirement. I think one of the biggest legacies that Dr. Marchant has left for this part of the state is a feeling of mutual partnership between K-12 partners as well as other higher education institutions. One of my first conversations when Dr. Marchick came on board as president of Central Carolina Community College was one where we wanted to do some unique career and technical education programs in Lee County and that developed into one of the most recognized apprenticeship programs partnered with Caterpillar and not many people have been able to model uh, that 
today because it create it requires such a partnership. When I came on board as superintendent in Harnett County, he was one of the first ones I met with the first week and said, okay, now that I'm in this position, what can we do in Harnett County to replicate a lot of the work we had done in the past? And because of that, we have very strong partnerships with business and industry, as well as some partnerships leading uh, students on to Campbell University, uh, not just in career and technical education, but also in our military science area with JROTC and others through our uh, four-year transfer programs. And so I really, uh, from my perspective, I think Dr. Marchant will really be remembered for those partnerships he built, not only just for the community college, but also what he's done for the students uh, that will be moving into the community college uh, at the uh, K-12 level. As you get to know a person, you think you know a lot about them. One of the unfortunate uh, things that you didn't really realize or I didn't realize until Dr. Marchant had reached his retirement was that he loves Subway. And so I'm hoping that one day uh, before uh, too much longer we're able to, to walk in and, and have a, a quality meal at Subway and I promise Dr. Marchant that uh, the Subway will be on me. Good afternoon Dr. Marchant. It is a wonderful thing to be able to tell you congratulations on your retirement. We will sorely miss you. I know personally I will miss you. You were one of the most responsive of any of the directors, administrators, or anybody I ever had a chance to deal with. My secretary likes to always tell the story of being able to reach you down at the beach whenever we needed some information on the community college and how responsive and quick you were and just how caring you were about not just making sure that you did the right thing by the students and the communities, but making sure that you kept everybody informed, kept everybody on par and just did everything you could to make us a better community. So thanks again for all of your service. Thanks again for everything that you've done. Thanks for helping make me a better legislator. And I wish you all the best in your retirement. Hi, Bud. As you get ready to leave and move back to South Carolina, I just wanted to share some thoughts about you. I, uh, I really appreciate what you've done and how you've acted the whole time you've been with Central Carolina Community College. The things I most admired about you were your professionalism, your demeanor, your civility, and just the way you treated people. Uh, when I was county commissioner and started working with you, uh, every time you came to a meeting, you always were dressed impeccably and, and, and acted professionally. As I got to work with you with the community college board, I found that one of your greatest strengths was your people. Uh, it's, it's often said that an effective leader leads with their ears, and you did. You're a great listener, uh, and you're a great promoter. Uh, every time something great happened at the college, you stood up and talked about the people that made it happen, not yourself, but the people. And I admire that. Uh, I wish you just a tremendous retirement. I know you're not gonna really retire, and I'll remind you that the word retire is not in the Bible. So I know you're gonna stay busy doing other things, but I hope that you have time to pursue some of your passions and that you have just a wonderful, successful uh, rest of your career and your life. We'll miss you, but Bud, your fingerprints will stay on this college for the, uh, for the life of the institution. So thank you, uh, good luck, goodbye, and I hope God blesses you just like he's been blessing you. Thank you. Well, Bud, it's the Sheriff Coates here. I just want to tell you how proud we are of you here at the Sheriff's Office and we're envious of you that you're getting to retire and, and go and do the things you want to do because certainly you've done so much for as far as the Harnett County Sheriff's Office. Your program up there has, uh, it has helped build our office here by the um, instructions and the classes that they've been able to take up there. You've run a first class facility and uh, it's made us better. And we're certainly going to miss you. I know you're going to still be involved, I'm sure, at some point in time in, in the, uh, the law enforcement program up there. Uh, I'm sure they really appreciate you. So I want to say at this time, from all of us here at the Hunter County Sheriff's Office, thank you, and we wish you well in your uh, future endeavors. And again, if I can ever do anything to help you, please give me a call and thank you so much and God bless you. Well, it's an honor for me to, to um, say farewell to uh, Dr. Moshan. I, I, I'm sad that you're leaving, but it, it's, it's been an honor knowing you. And I, I, I wanna say this, uh, I'm a huge fan of CCCC and 
uh, ha have been for many years. I, I wouldn't be where I'm at right now if it wasn't for our community college. And I was bragging to, to uh, someone yesterday about how fortunate Lee County is to have Central Carolina Community College for our young people and uh, for adults that want to uh, start a, a, a new career. And, uh, and Dr. Marchant, you've been a, you've been a huge part of, of the, our community college's success. And we're going to miss you. Um, I, I hate to see you're, that you're, I, I hate that you're leaving, but I'm, I'm happy for you uh, all at the same time. And I just want to tell you it's been an honor uh, being friends with you and knowing you. And I, I wish you the best. And uh, again, you're, you're a huge part of the success of our community college system here in, in Lee County. And I, I will always uh, brag about CCCC and, and, and brag about the work that you've done here. So God bless you. And if I can ever do anything to help you in the future, please let me know. Dr. Marchant, I'm, I, I'm certainly, certainly depressed that you're leaving. Um, the memories are great. God, we go way back. I remember when you first came, so many good things. Uh, us folks here at Murtech are so, so thankful for this community college and all the things that you've done. For 29 years we've been here, for 29 years you've given us support. You fit right in. You were an amazing asset to this Lee County, uh, Central Carolina Community College, and, and we're so thankful for you and all your hard work. I consider you a good friend, um, and, I, and I will miss you dearly here in Lee County. So, so thanks for all you do, but I really, I really, really look forward to the future when you and I are going to be doing this. See you soon. Dr. Merchant, first off, congratulations on your retirement. Over the years, you and I have worked on several boards together. I've always appreciated your insight and your guidance. You've been a significant contribution to not just Lee County, but the surrounding counties as well. It's probably hard to say how many lives that you've actually touched during your time here at CCCC. Speaking of CCCC and Caterpillar, our welder training program that we work with the local high school, it's been an outstanding program. It's some of the best cooperation between the industry and the community college that's out there. We've, uh, the program itself has gained not only local recognition, but national recognition. And that wouldn't have happened without your leadership. So I want to say I appreciate that. There again, it, uh, you've reached that stage in life when it's uh, time to turn the page and do something else. So I only wish you well as you go forward. Congratulations. Farewell, Dr. Bud. Thanks for all the great CNA and nurses that you've sent me over the years. My name is Frida. I'm from Magnolia House Retirement Center and Royal Oaks here in Sanford. Good luck in all your endeavors and definitely enjoy retirement. All right, I'd like to congratulate uh, Dr. Marshawn on his pending retirement. Um, I'd like to uh, also thank him for his professionalism in dealing with the county. It's always uh, nice when people come and ask the county for money and do it in a professional way. and, and uh, you know, we've uh, had a great relationship for these 10 years, and, and I will miss you, bud, and I, I wish I was going with you. So take care in South Carolina and come see us sometime. Right. Dr. Marjit, on behalf of Central Carolina Hospital, we just want to wish you the best in your retirement. Uh, we appreciate the years of collaboration between the hospital and the college, and again, wish you well. I'm glad you're returning to your native South Carolina. That's also where I'm from, and I hope to one day be able to do the same. Thank you. Hello, my name is Phil Addison. I'm the Executive Director for the Lillington Area Chamber of Commerce, and we want to congratulate Dr. Merchant on his retirement and all that he has done in uh, the Central Carolina Community College system, especially here in Harnett County. Lillington is a benefactor of the Central Carolina Community College system and all that takes place in Harnett County. Uh, there's not a day that goes by in Lillington uh, that we don't see the uh, results and the benefits from what's done in our area through Central Carolina Community College and we know that Dr. Merchant was a huge part of that and we want to thank you and congratulate you on your retirement. Thank you sir. Trump on there. Yeah. <laughs> I'm afraid you might find me. <laughs> Thanks, Terry. <laughs> I don't see. Do we have anybody who's going to do the invitation today? Mr. Odom. Mr. Odom.
Open the rotary and fish. Let's do it. Open our eyes that we may see. Open our ears that we may hear. Touch our hearts that we may love. Clear our minds that we may think. Strengthen our hands that we may work. Amen. Thank you, Gerald. Yes, sir. <clears throat> Get up and tell us what's going on. Good afternoon, fellow Rotarians. Uh, don't see any visitors today, but we do have a few announcements. Uh, Devon, would you like to start, please? Okay. Uh, we are at the very last week of a uh, big, big river. And so what we're doing now is we're getting ready to... Uh, for the next production, which will be Grease, and that's going to be a biggie too. And so, all I don't want to do is give you a heads up to we will be having our drinks and dessert in the balcony. So, what we need to do is to get everybody that's interested in going, participating, to go and get your tickets now because the balcony has already got some people going to be sitting up there because <coughs> that's where they want to sit. So what we need to do is to get your get your tickets. <coughs> Peggy's given us the price of twenty-two dollars each person. So heads up, May fourteenth, Friday night, in the balcony at the Greece. temple, Greece, and it's a biggie. I've already got people saying they want they want to come. Okay. Hey, Brian, uh, May fourteenth is a. It's a Friday uh, Tuesday. night. It's a Tuesday. It's supposed to be Friday night. Seventeen. <coughs> no. No. We're closed by then. We close on May twelfth. <laughs> 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 May twelfth. What is he? Right. I think it was May fourth. No wonder we got a deal. Watch a movie. May fourth is a Saturday. Is it? It's a Friday. Friday night is the second Friday. It's either the May 3rd, the second Friday, so third or the 10th. May 10th is the second May Friday in May. Okay, May 10th, my correction. I'm sorry. Sorry. I got this. Oh, all of that brings us back to two. I'm also in the process of getting sponsorships for a golf tournament that's coming up that Peggy introduced to you two weeks ago. And uh, so I'm looking for sponsorships. I'm looking for players, and I'm also looking for people who are interested in participating with the uh, raffle. The raffle is for $50 a piece. First place is Grove Park Inn for two. Second prize is uh, Forsyth Pinehurst, Pinehurst number two, two and a Forsyth Pinehurst, Pinehurst number four. Do you remember the date of the tournament? May 14th. 14th. That's the 14th. That's where I got the 14th. <laughs> Two flights, 8 a.m., 145. Okay. So, don't get me started. I've already been with John this morning. <laughs> she, she chewed me out. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. John, I believe you had an announcement. Today. I did. Um, our Family of Rotary uh, event for April is going to be April 27. Uh, I'm heading up and assisting with the Sanford Block Party again. We are cleaning up the neighborhood around Temple Ball Field. So if you know that that's kind of in the, uh, between 7th and 9th streets, and it's gonna be the, the neighborhood immediately around there. Um, I'll bring flyers and at successive meetings and start passing them out, so you can be a part of that. It's gonna be Saturday, April 27. We're gonna feed you at 8 a.m. It's gonna be like nine uh, to, in the morning till about two o'clock in the afternoon. We're gonna feed you breakfast in the morning and lunch in the afternoon. Do, do you so if you can come out. We can always use, don thank you Blair for asking, but we can always use yeah, either monetary donations or uh, materials. We're, we're doing pretty good, we're doing really well for food and materials, but for the things that are not donated in kind and or just straight up donations, <coughs> we use gift cards and monies to go ahead and purchase, sometimes it's ham hamburger buns, sometimes it's paintbrushes and just stuff that wasn't donated. Would like, so. I think before we've done a couple hundred dollars. From the we board. have, yeah, yeah, the Rotary Club, and, and thank you for bringing it up, but. Um, Should the board meeting? <coughs> We can actually uh, feel that. So. That's it. Thank you, John. Thanks. Any other announcements, Neil? Yeah, I, I'm going to be sending out invoices uh, real soon, and uh, I would appreciate uh, quick mm -hmm. responses if possible because our operating account is uh, is going very close to <laughs> not being 
Operate. Solvent. Operate. <laughs> Solvent. There you go. So look, look for those in your email. Yeah. Real quick, I just yesterday got an email from Belt. They're having their trade case <clears throat> sale on May 4th. I wasn't able to run it last time because I wasn't available. I could use some help on May 4th. Keep that in mind. I'll be needing some tickets. In their Thank, you. Thank you, Ed. Any other announcements? Could you tell us about Pets? Yeah. Um, so Bill Stone. Uh, myself, uh, David Spivey, uh, attended PETS, um, which is the president-elect training seminars, um, Thursday and Friday in Greensboro. Had a great time. There was uh, probably close to 600 people there. It was good to visit with other club members and share ideas. Um, so it was a good time. David, I don't know if you wanted to add anything to that. or <coughs> Well, I think it's, it's really great that we had our President elect and President nominee both there. So that really gives you a, a jump on your. It was your good. It was a lot to learn. I'm you know, surprised at some of the things that other clubs are doing, and I'm sure we'll be sharing some of that with you as far as you know charities and uh, events and things like that. So it was good to learn um, on that end. So. Um, any other announcements or brags? I got a brag. All right. I want to brag on my fellow spelling rotarians. For the spelling bee this past Monday, we uh, taught, tied for fourth, I believe. We tied for fourth, yeah. So we hung in there. That was well, fun. I don't there's about 20, 20 teams. At least 20, 22 teams. This is our 19th year consecutive doing yeah, it. Yeah, they've done it for 20 years, yeah. so our club has done it for 19. Yeah. So it's kind of a tradition. Now, I did recommend that our team get matching bumblebee suits for next year. But I didn't get any favorable responses from my team members. It wasn't in the budget. It was not, you know, the team, the team was John, Robert, myself, and Rupert. Uh, so set my second suggestion would be maybe we could get matching top hats. Yeah. Uh, and, and of course, that might be something to work into the rotary, uh, to a rotary budget for next year. I think so. We put that in the budget for sure. You, you might be a little classier than the bulk of these suits. What was the word in the last year? Maybe the temple has, uh, has some in their uh, yeah. storage closet. <laughs> we do. Thank you, Howard. Ed, you got one? Yeah. <laughs> Uh, may not go past this weekend, but it's at Hale Purdue to my alma mater. They're at Sweet 16 this year. Oh, yeah. And I think they will last year. Yeah. <coughs> Thank you, Ed. Any other brags? Right. Um, opening day, guys. <laughs> go try. <laughs> Come on, Jeff. Oh, I thought we were going to wash that off. Thank <laughs> <laughs> <Like> you. <laughs> Any others? Thank you. <coughs> and of course, you guys know that tonight it starts back up. It's uh, got some good games on tonight, good games tomorrow night, and um, <coughs> it's been good so far. So. Today's program is Matt Rosser. He's going to talk to us about forensics. And I told him that I watch a lot of forensic shows on TV and need some help. I'll be glad to. <laughs> Matt Rosser. Thank y'all for having me. Um, I joined the Rotary you know, just a few months ago, and I, but I've actually spoke in front of the uh, club several years ago. Um, I'm just going to basically go over a little bit of what we do, <coughs> what our capabilities are in Lee County. Um, a lot of people, when I first got into forensics in the career, they, you know, of course, the show uh, CSI was um, really you know, popular. And there was all different versions of it. And so everywhere I went, people come up to me and said, you know, um, they, they said, yeah, are you going to pull this equipment out? Are you going to be able to do this quickly? You know, and this <coughs> conception as to what our, abil you know, our abilities are as far as local law enforcement goes. But one thing that we definitely had was we did have technology. Tracy Corner come in as a sheriff. I was working at the sheriff's department prior to him being elected. And one thing that he wanted to make sure is that we, we stepped into the 21st century with the technology that was available to all of us. And so just want to kind of go over exactly what we, we have at our disposal. Of course, there are state agencies and federal agencies that we can partner with, that we use, that we um, can work with to, to you know help with certain, certain things within 
our case work. My main uh, function at the sheriff's office is to investigate any crime that is reported to the sheriff's office. Particularly most felonies, um, anything from <coughs> homicide all the way down to petty larceny, you know, somebody stealing somebody's lawn ornament off the, the front yard. You know, sometimes it's, it's exciting, but other times it's, it's, you know, can be mundane a little bit, just like anything else. <coughs> Our capabilities at the sheriff's, ball, <coughs> sheriff's office um, basically is what our, our main function when we go to a crime scene is to document. We want to ensure that we document everything just for the fact that down the road we may have to come back and testify to that information. You know, two years from now, I've even testified as far as five years from, from a case that we were working. Um, so we, obviously we do photo photography. I actually was able to, I enjoy photography. That was one thing that becoming, you know, a forensic uh, crime scene person was, I was able to learn how to properly take photographs. Um, but through photography, we also do crime scene mapping as well. When we go to a crime scene, we have, you know, uh, the evidence and stuff that we had to collect. So we have to document that evidence. Mapping allows us to go back two years from now and kind of show you a floor plan of what that scene looked like. I also want to talk a little bit about the latent fingerprint capabilities that we have. Um, when I first come into the sheriff's office or into the forensics, we didn't have in the way of developing and searching fingerprints, we didn't have any of that technology. Basically, we had the ability to dust with, with fingerprint powder. Um, also, uh, alternate light sources. We have, I got some examples here I want to show you guys. Coming up. But, um, alternate light sources and also forensic uh, cell phone an analysis. Um, you guys have seen TV and tracking you know, somebody's cell phone or being able to look it up and pinpoint exactly where somebody is. We've had that technology. We haven't had access to it except for the last maybe eight, ten years. <coughs> so crime scene documentation. I'm going to show you guys photos from actual crime scenes in Lee County. So if you guys, if I show you anything that you recognize, everything that we've done so far or that I have on here, has been adjudicated in court or was not a necessarily a criminal act, it was just something we investigated. But of course, like I said, crime scene documentation, we want to show exactly what took place so we can have that to, you know, in court. This is a uh, photo of South Plank Road. Is everybody familiar with South Plank Road? Mm -hmm. It's on the, uh, basically, the southern end of, southern uh, eastern port or western port of Lee County. This uh, house that was sitting off to the right of this road was a scene of many drive-by shootings. Um, we believe it was, you know, uh, gang-related. Every one of those markers you see in the road is a shell casing from a uh, 223, like an assault rifle, uh, AR-15, 223 caliber. Every one of those we had to, of course, photograph and then measure the location and map it out. So it's, it can be very tedious at times. Other uh, examples of you know photography, we want to make sure that we show the area where the crime happened, but also document each piece of evidence. And the marker number two on the left photo shows the location of some drag marks and uh, blood spatter from a robbery that took place in an abandoned house in Lee County. At a closer up photo photograph, it shows the actual shoe impression, the shoe wear impression of the suspect who was wearing the shoes at the time, they stepped in the victim's blood and then, of course, exited the residence. <clears throat> so, once we go and document the scene, the next thing we gotta do is look for evidence. And, of course, everybody's heard of fingerprints. Does anybody, can anybody tell me as far as fingerprints, is there anybody in the world that ha has the same fingerprints? Has there ever been documented? Have you ever heard? I don't think so. So the, the thing about the fingerprint evidence is it's more unique than DNA. When you're born, when, during gestation, when, the, when you're in the womb, about, uh, about the first, second trimester, your fingerprints start to form. And they remain the same throughout life. They do not change. And unless you have an injury, of course, a scar or something like that. But because of that, each individual person, the way they're formed, 
is completely unique. When it comes to DNA, identical twins will have the same DNA, but fingerprints, they will not. There's never been a documented case. There's almost you know, seven billion people in the world and never once has there been documented two fingerprints alike. And there's just so much information on the fingerprint. You see lines, and that's what most of you see is the grooves and, and lines on your fingers, the ridges. But each one of those ridges is made up, there's approximately 1,900 per square inch on your fingers of these uh, eccrine sweat pores, and the way they form makes them incredibly unique. <coughs> of course, the courts have to try to, you know, basically the biggest thing they can do is not the individuality, but they, they want to look at the fact that what the training and everything is of the person looking at the fingerprint. What we have to do is document that and be sure that we can represent, you know, replicate it or show that how we arrive at the conclusion for fingerprint analysis. <clears throat> Chemical development. Um, we have a lab. It's a small operational lab in, in our sheriff's office. And one thing that we can do is chemical development um, of fingerprints. Uh, there's several different types of chemicals that react in different substances that can be passed on. Such as this is uh, on this money. This was chemically treated in, in the um, different materials reactive only to what was found in the sweat of the uh, person that touched the, the money. Matt, can you, can you alter the ridges like by sanding your fingertips down? Seems like I saw something when I was a kid. Somebody is a safe cracker or something like that. He'd sand his fingernails down. I mean, his, his, his you know, fingers down. His Don't give me any ideas. Yeah, well, <laughs> you can. You obviously, brick masons. Um, yeah. Senile atrophy actually occurs, you know, of course, at around 40 years of age, older your skin loses elasticity and so your, your fingers will become uh, more wrinkled. But a lot of times we've uh, fingerprinted brick masons, people that work with their hands, and it's hard to obtain fingerprints. So it, it, does, it doesn't alter them, it just makes them less apparent. Yeah. Um, we had a lady that was, she was from, I believe, one of the Central American countries. She came here and she was trying to apply for a visa or, or some form of uh, residency and she was in her 80s and we could not get her fingerprints it was it was just they were not there uh, just the, due to the age and everything her finger, fingerprints didn't really exist i don't know what ended up happening with her but it was it was a matter of whether or not she was going to get her residency or not <coughs> our aphis system so is anybody familiar with aphis I've seen on TV. APHIS is basically a database of fingerprints. Right now, the um, FBI has NGI, which is basically a new implementation of um, APHIS. It holds 70 million <coughs> records. Back in 2008 9, um, I ended up applying for <coughs> the Paul Coverdale Forensic <coughs> Science Grant and was awarded about 40,000 for the Sheriff's Department to start our own APHIS database. And what that gives us is basically a quicker access to a database of local people. Now we're only talking about five or 6,000 people that have been arrested since that point forward that we have in this database, but I've seen several cases that were solved within minutes. Uh, but the database is held on a computer and we take the, the fingerprints that you've seen, scan them into the computer, plot the points out, and it runs against all the database. Yes, sir. Isn't everybody that's been in the military, aren't they in the, are they in that database? They are in the, in the federal database. Now, <clears throat> we have the capability of searching the federal database, but it does not search the civilian and military. Um, that is something we'd have to, to ask the FBI to, to assist us with. Um, the database that we have, apparently it's, I mean, it's 10 years old now, but it's still, we, we still use it. And basically, once that fingerprint is sent, put into the database, it's constantly run against everybody that's arrested and put in our jail. Mm -hmm. And that was really where a lot of the funding and everything went to after that point was getting, everybody was in fingerprinted. Sanford arrested <coughs> somebody, they fingerprinted them and kept the fingerprints in Sanford Police Department. Yeah. We did ours in Lee County. Well, we finally decided to put the, the machine that scans every, the fingerprint in the jail, which, you know, of course, made most sense. We built our database, we have a local database. But we do have access to the state. Um, but we had to go outside of our department to uh, search the state database. <laughs> so
So that was just some points on, on our APHA system. Um, like I said, it was 70 million offender records at, at this point. And one of the studies that was done back in the, probably 2009, 2010, was the FBI took their massive database and they started running it against itself. And that was one of the studies that showed when we go to court and say, well, how do you know that there's nobody in the world with the same fingerprint? If not everybody's been fingerprinted, obviously. But we can say statistically, because it's been run against so many millions of records, and there's <coughs> 10 fingers on each person's hand, and each of those is run against each other. Even there's no two fingerprints on the same people, on the same person between fingers. <coughs> Uh, I brought this just as kind of an example of what we have is the alternate light source. It has a um, wavelength of light for each one that, that reflect different materials, uh, different wavelengths, and we actually can filter that light out and see different fluids, um, fingerprint uh, material that is left behind. Um, we use the alternate light source mainly in the lab, mainly to look for fingerprints. Also, um, we can develop fingerprints with super glue. <coughs> And super glue will react a little bit differently once we dye it, uh, dye stain it. So the alternate light source you can see on this this uh, this example up here, it's two different. It's the same surface and it's reacted to two different wavelengths of lights. That just helps us search the um, the area of the surface for for any kind of latent evidence. Cell phone forensics, um, this is our Cellbrite device, and it's really kind of the bottom of what the technology is out there. But what this device will do is actually pull everything from the phone and put it in a, a readable format that we can go through and it categorizes between late, I mean, uh, text, between their contacts. We can look at if there's GPS, GPS enabled. Uh, tracking on the phone, we can actually look at those points. This has been become really big in, in my career over the last five or six years, having access to Google and <coughs> to all the major cell phone networks. We have to, of course, apply for a search warrant. It's only done through a Superior Court judge, but we do have access to be able to track, um, to look at histories of, um, you know, where someone's cell device went. Currently, we were working a um, homicide that was from 2017. It's unsolved. It's one of the few unsolved homicides that Lee County has. And we went back and approached Google and we <coughs> did basically what a, what's called a geodefense. We put an imaginary boundary around the residence where the victim was killed. And we can go back, if they have any uh, Google enabled uh, device or app, and they cross that boundary. We can actually go back and look and get that device <coughs> number. But then, of course, we had to apply for another search warrant to get the particulars on that device. Um, and just as a, a major break for us in this case, it come back with someone coming into the area and leaving right at the time of the, the homicide. And of course, we were still in the process of trying to identify who that is, but there are some restrictions as far as privacy goes. Uh, <coughs> This originally was the same device that most cell phone companies have when you went in and switched out phones, they plug it in, you know, and transferred your database before they started having the cloud and everything. <coughs> um, this was originally what it started, but they've come a long ways over the last 10 years that we've been using the device. Um, we also have access to the Secret Service. Um, I'm working with some guys out of Texas right now um, who do a lot of mobile forensics. So we have a lot of stuff at their disposal. Um, so outside of that, we were, you know, basically able to investigate most any type of crime. We have the SBI who can come in at our request and assist us, but we also do other types of incidents that happen in the county. This is a, um, this was a pedestrian, basically a suicide, that um, the guy basically stepped out in front of the train in the rural part of Lee County. This was an Amtrak train headed from Miami to New York, I mean from New York to Miami. They don't usually travel very slow either. No, no, it comes, and this is not too far from my residence actually. It comes through about 11 o'clock every night, and this guy lived nearby. But um, this is just an example of something we had to document the scene. I mean, it, there was no crime, there was no, you know, <clears throat> there was really nothing that was going to happen from that point forward. They say this happens 
almost monthly on that route, somewhere between New York and Florida, that somebody gets hit at least, you know. So this train went through the intersection. Um, I don't know what it was traveling speed wise, but it, it stopped about, I think it was 2,400 feet down the line. And so it was quite a, a large scene to actually document <coughs> structure fires. Um, we, a lot of times we will partner with the fire marshal's office in Lee County. They do a lot of the actual evidence collection, but we do most of the documentation with that. Now the technology, today we use drones as well to photograph and film. Uh, we just uh, purchased a drone in the last couple of months and we were able to last homicide that we had, uh, Miss Brown, uh, we were able to actually search and find some evidence in downtown Sanford because of the, the drone. <laughs> uh, industrial accidents. I know there was one in Noble Oil several years back. Um, of course, we, we don't do a lot of the actual investigation, but we document this was a, uh, a race shop where a canister, a large nitrous. cylinder, nitrous, nitrous exploded. Um, in Lemon Springs? Yep. Mm -hmm. And actually, you can see the force of it. It just blew. This was a solid brick wall. This wasn't brick veneer. Um, the damage that it created. Um, we also <laughs> assist uh, the narcotics agents. This was several years ago. This was um, in the southern part of Lee County. This this uh, trailer, the small residence, from the outside it looked like any other residence in the area around it. But there was a major grow operation, um, and this was some of the cartels uh, <coughs> that had this operating. And these guys were just some of the guys they had in there. But they had a very sophisticated timer system and light system and feeding system set up. Every room in the house had some form of a grow, whether it was the starter plants all the way to the larger uh, adult plants. But this is just an example of what we faced. Um, Did someone tell on them or how'd you guys find them? I don't remember. This was probably yeah. 2010. I think it was actually the um, the power company. I, think I, the was power gonna, company I was gonna reference that they may have a life total <laughs> of $500 a month. Where a regular residence like that would be, be 110. Yeah. Yeah. Exactly. yeah. So, and they, yeah. they had actually dug down into the main yeah. service and, and tapped off of it. Yeah. I don't really remember exactly. It may have been the homeowner that owned the house that was renting, mm -hmm. renting to them. But. So, anyway, that's just a small portion of what we can do. Um, we stay busy, and there's a lot of stuff you guys see in the news. And there's a lot of stuff that happens every day that you guys don't see reported. Um, but we do have a lot more capability than we did five, ten years ago. So, any questions? So, as busy as you guys are, <coughs> are y'all understaffed? Uh, typically, we can be. I know in our <coughs> unit, we've got uh, eight actual active detectives that work, and we probably get anywhere from three or four cases a week per person. And a lot of times, <coughs> if you get on one case, it could take up, you know, weeks at a time. So, yes, we, I mean, it's always, we could always have more people. Right. We could always have oh, more. Um, we just have to triage the cases more now, you know, as far as what's, you know, something bad to say, but I mean, you know, somebody steals something from you, and that you take that personally, you feel bad, you feel violated, but there's a lot of other crimes that we have to take priority. Yeah. Any other questions? Yes, ma'am. you read your food book? I did as a kid. I don't anymore. I see too many of them now. He can write them now. That's right. Any other questions? Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Yes, sir. Uh, today, um, must have been everybody just like me, uh, didn't have a whole lot of money. Today we raised $44 for the Polio Plus campaign <coughs> to the winner. Oscar, why don't you draw out a winning ticket there for us? Yeah. Oh, you're going to have me read the numbers. Okay, no problem. <laughs> okay. The last four numbers are 4979. 4979. Ah. Ah. Yeah. The lucky $22 goes to Neil, who will lead us in the four way test and the pledge of the flag. No, 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 no. Money to pull. Not yet. Yeah. Well, okay. He's going to do it, right? Uh, yeah. yeah. All right. Let him do it. All right. Do you know what? <laughs> That's okay, Jim. Yeah. I don't even matter. Here to separate you. Let's pull the ticket. Mr. Miller. Oscar, oh. double duty today. <coughs> All right, I'm out of there. We're going to pull two because we took a day off. We took a 
last week off. The first winner is Nancy Remington. I know, write down Nancy Remington. I'll direct you. 787. Now we're going to put the ticket back in so we draw for this week because everybody gets to be in every week. <coughs> He spent too long. He spent too much time in New York. Yeah. He's not. He's not trainable anymore. All right, Oscar. One more, please, sir. <clears throat> Holly Marcio Otix, Jeremy Thomas. Let me, let me have that one. Wait, let me do that again. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Okay. Oh, we passed seven hundred. Uh, we've had we've had a, about a dozen or so folks who've sold uh, significantly more than their basic quota. We've got a few folks who haven't turned any tickets. I will be here. I won't be here next week, but my stand-in will be glad to collect your tickets. Yeah, I'd be happy to. Probably look along. Thank you, kind sir. <coughs> Back in the pot. And. Uh, I have your check when we're all done. Okay. Thank you, Jim. <clears throat> Thank you all for attending today. Hopefully, Morris will be back next week. If not, it'll be. David wants to join the stage. Yeah, we pour the stage uh, for about one or two minutes. Right after the noon. Mm -hmm. All right, Neil. Can we leave out here? <clears throat> Four way test for the things we think, say, or do. First, is it the truth? truth? Is it fair to all concerned? Will we will be fulfilled in better friendships? Will we be beneficial to all concerned? I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Mm -hmm. Guys, have a great week. Thank you.